Let's play Wheel of Future, the infrastructure challenge for city planners. I'm Emma Scharfenbrick, and today's challenge is... Waste not. What not? Correct. And right now, we are east of Cairo in beautiful Eggebrog. Let's meet our guests all the way from beautiful Detroit, Michigan. We have Emily Abramzik. Welcome. Thanks. It's awesome to be here in Egypt. Happy to have you. So, Emily, why the interest in waste management? Well, Emma, before I was promoted to city planner, I was a civil engineer in Detroit's public works department. Detroit has made such a huge comeback since its bankruptcy days. Oh, yeah. We're so proud of the turnaround. But with over 4 million residents, there are enormous waste management challenges. That's the reason for my interest in Refive Revive. We'll get to that in a bit. But first, let's welcome Leah Schroeder, city planner of nearby Alexandria. Good to meet you, Emma. Likewise. So, Leah, you're also an engineer. That's right. Before city planning in Alexandria, I manage ways to energy systems in East Lansing. My environmental engineering background really helps me in my current job. I imagine it does. Yes, but Alexandria is also plagued with major waste management problems. Alrighty, then let's reveal the wheel. To find out who wins the amazing waste management scholarship to University of Makadam, the second great U of M, along with funds to implement Refive Revive in their city. Refive Revive. Rethink, reduce, reuse, recycle, reclaim. Developed here in Agabrog City. Don't you mean developed in Garbage City? It was Garbage City until Refi Revive turned it around. It's the zero waste garbage pollution solution that helped revive this once downtrodden city. Way back, Agabrog was the garbage dump of Cairo. Residents would collect its trash and haul it back. Then everyone would sort it. The economy was waste management. And Garbage City's residents were the ultimate recyclers. But that's why Garbage City's engineers were able to develop Refive Revive. Residents recycled their dreams to build a better future. Okay, okay, you obviously know we're a great city. So let's play Waste Not, Want Not. Here's how it works. I'll spin the wheel, and you two will take turns discussing your five revive. For each good answer, you'll move to the city, and the goal is to be the first to get to Makata Mountain. The limestone source for the Giza Pyramids. And the location of the famous cave church. Correct. But back to the game. So here's an aerial view of Eggerbrog. To get to U of M, you'll travel from the industrial zone, through the agricultural zone, through the commercial district, then across the residential zones. But watch out. The wheel lands on landfill. Just go. Just go back to start. Landfill or waste disposal are not part of Refive Revive. Ready? Ready. Spin that wheel. So Leah won the coin toss and goes first. Reduce. How does Refive Revive reduce waste? The best way to reduce waste is not to create it in the first place. Green chemistry reduces waste, and prevention reduces the need to harvest new materials. In the past, packaging was just thrown away, but we all know there really is no away. For sure, shopping at Eggbrock's farmer's market reduces food packaging. Buying local and less throwaway stuff reduces waste. Take the piezo solar roadway to the agricultural zone. All right, Emily's turn. Hmm, reuse. What about reusing waste? Well, simple methods include reusing things or restoring old items to create new uses. I know, I just love pre-purposed antiques in Ruggabrog's colossal flea market. Me too! Yeah, that's cool, but an even better way to recycle waste than flea markets is the strategic mining of landfills. Here's a cross-section of an old landfill. Valuable things like copper can be dug up through landfill deconstruction, and rare earth metals such as neodymium from e-waste can also be harvested. Landfill mining is safer and easier than conventional mining. Reverse landfilling it is. Head on over to the agricultural zone. All right, let's spin again. Recycle. Tell us about recycling. Recycling saves the value of waste, and smart design allows different materials to be separated with ease. I'll show you. Underground vacuum tubes carry recyclables to the recycling mega complex. Then things like metal and glass are separated with filters and magnets. It's a huge energy saver. For instance, recycling aluminum saves 95% of the energy and 85% of the CO2 emissions versus mining new materials. That's a lot of energy in CO2. It is. Saving the value it is. Head on over to the commercial district. All right, on to Emily. Oh my. Landfill. What? Landfill? I got landfill? That stinks. So sorry. No room for landfills with through five revive. Here's your piece back. Take the Egolev Mass Transit Loop and ride them back to start. And on to Leah. Reclaim. I've got this. Energy stored in waste can be reclaimed. Here's a cross section of a waste to energy system and underground vacuum tubes. 
Plasma gasification treats hazardous waste and non-recyclables to produce electricity. And organics, such as food scraps and agricultural waste, or rot in the anaerobic digester to produce methane and compost. Then the methane biogas is combusted to produce electricity. But doesn't burning methane create carbon dioxide? It does, but B3 filter is captured through absorption. Oh yeah, I've heard about that. B3, biodegradable biopolymer biosponge. Starch and agricultural waste, such as corn stalks, produces polylactic acid. It's used to make the B3 filters. Exactly, and after use, B3 is a nutrient source for the algae digesters. I know, they consume black water and produce hydrogen, another green energy source. Waste energy is the answer. Head on over to the residential zone. You're almost there. Nice, Emily, the wheel land on Rethink. What about that? Well, Emma, rethinking waste often requires stepping outside the box and working towards zero waste. If you do that, then waste becomes a resource instead of something to get rid of. If you rethink how you manage waste, you can often eliminate creating it in the first place. Yes, rethinking waste is the key to win the waste management game. Head straight to U of M. Oh, wait, my epithet is telling me that Ligas hit the mountain too. You both win the scholarship. And Detroit wins funds to implement Refive Revive. But remember, with Refive Revive, everyone wins. And as this old time environmental crusader <coughs> might say, give a hoot, don't pollute, implement Refive Revive. Air, land, water, we all should help keep our planet looking, looking good. good. So it seemed in uh, your presentation you're relying a lot on current technologies and then you implemented some future technologies. Could you delineate which ones you consider current technologies and which ones you consider future technologies? We have a lot of different kind of technologies in our city and one of the more futuristic ideas is probably our transportation system. We watched a video on it in class when we were trying to figure out a way to show it and what it is is it's a system where we have ba magnets on either side of a battery and they create a closed loop system when it goes through the wire and there's a magnetic field propo propelling it through. So we showed it on the model as a different way of transportation where you can take your personal pod, which is considered your Egapod, and you're able to take them up a sub hub that are located in each zone and click into the system and ride any anywhere throughout the city and beyond. Another thing that's kind of futuristic is our underground vacuum tubes. They kind of work like the thing at the bank teller where you put your money in and it shoots stuff into the bank. But in Eggerbrog, we made it on a much bigger scale, so it takes your waste throughout the city. There are, it, it's the vacuum tubes, so you put your pot, your trash in the pods, which are about five feet big, so, and then it takes it to wherever it needs to go. The citizens can sort it if they want to, but they, and they tend to do, but if they don't want to, it will, they're smart pods, so they will take it to where it needs to go. And all of our ideas will, are able to be plausible in the future. We take ideas that are around today and just push them to the next level. Like our anaerobic digester. We actually took a field trip to Michigan State University where we saw one because they have one on campus. And so we learned about that from Dr. Foster and they talked to us about how it works and how it takes their animal waste and then produces energy. So we saw it, but today in our city, we use it a lot more efficiently and it's a lot more common in our city. We even have it located in the major buildings of our cities and we have two in it right now. And the cool thing about it too is it has modular scalability so you can build it up when you need to make more energy or you can take it down or if you like are not able to keep the money flow into it. I have a question. What do you think is the most unique feature in your city? The most unique feature in our city is probably our active membrane walls because the cool thing about them is they harvest water, sunlight, wind, energy, so they're, they really are dependent on themselves. So they're kind of like a flower type petal system and you can tap it and then it can open up and allow sunlight to come in. And it also allows wind to go through so you can have a natural air conditioning system along with collecting water. Since we're in Egypt, we don't get much rain. So the active membrane walls collect the moisture in the air. So as the air temperature cools down, the humidity 
like it condenses onto the water onto the B3 sponges, which is what the active membrane walls are made from. And it also cleans the air, so it takes in CO2 out from the air, making our city clean and green. Okay. Another thing that's unique in our city is our communication system called the Epitat. It's an epidermal tattoo that is 3D printed on your wrist about every six months, and it can be personalized. It knows your needs so that if you are sick, it will alert your doctor immediately so that your doctor can come and give you the help you need. Or if you have diabetes, it will insert your daily amount of insulin that your doctor prescribed so you don't have to worry about it. But it also really helps with the needy because if you are paralyzed or in a wheelchair, you can't really go up a curve very easily. So your Epitec communicates with the Egger grid, which controls everything in our city, so that the curb will lower, so you can just easily get up on the curb. Also, one of our more interesting things is our, elect is our electrostatic wind turbine, which takes and mists a positively charged water droplet, and the front of it is negatively charged, so the water droplet wants to come forward, but because of the wind, it gets pushed back near the positive side, so it creates a voltage increase, which is also another way we get energy. If you did have one of those medical emergencies and your uh, medical expert was across the town, what would be the fastest way to get to them in the city? Well, your epitaph, as I said before, it links with the aggregate, so that, and it's voice activated, so if you can't tap it, it will automatically go. But it also communicates with the safety features, so that if you do need the help, the police or whoever else will come and help you and get you to the nearest hospital. So what would be the transportation mode that they would use to get there the fastest? Because your Epitad also links with your Egapod and pretty much everything in the city, and since we have vertical parking where your, El your Egapod is on the house, you're able... <laughs> 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 